Hey guys, Tyrep here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Rishnaya Piraprava. I'm Steve, spawning in the south. We've got Macmillan 2 playing his AW and his loadout is Grand Offensive, Elite Armor, and Luftwaffe Ground Forces facing offensive in the north playing as Soviets. We have Treads who has Urban Defense, Armored Assault, and Shock Rifle Frontline. In terms of rankings, Macmillan around rank 70 and treads around rank 60, so a pretty even matchup between these two. Looking forward to a notice that uh, Macmillan did go for a Kubwagen first, which is uh, somewhat unusual. You usually see a Fox Stranger first, then into the Kubel. I feel like uh, live vehicles are really strong on this map. Reasonably wide, quite a lot of negative cover can make uh, troop movements tricky. And some uh, pretty decent cutoffs too. So if you're on the Kubel, can be uh, pretty strong, especially now against a conscript start. I can have an M3 to f find it and chase it down and kill it. Should be pretty effective. Still probably ultimately getting forced away there, but the Kubel still dishing it out to the conscripts. Meanwhile, Komeji's are capping in the far north. Okay, soft retreat back there from Treads. Looks like he's going to send that low health squad to do some capping in the back lines. The Mile Fox Street is charging down the center on themselves in light cover. And with the assistance of the Kubel, should be able to win here. Kubel drives in. It might have been a misclick. And the folks charging across the road, I would not have advised this. And they are just getting chopped to pieces. That was a horrible maneuver from McMillan. Should have stayed there, wait for the Kubel to do the heavy lifting until that squad got down like three models, then maybe cross the road. So that this is some uh, suboptimal Kubel wagon play. But that's what I was talking about. You know, the road can be really tricky. Quite a few. few uh, you've covered crossings on this map, so. In between that and the river as well. Can be a bit tricky trying to put down some sandbags here. Kuwagan has pulled back. He's going to finish them. The squad did get a little bit low in the process. Looks like the conscript's going to take that opportunity to just close the distance. Should be able to win from uh, close range. Or well, maybe not now. They dropped two models straight away, and this squad refusing to drop models. But then comes a conscript on the other side. Should be uh, pretty easy after that. Oh, the models are crazy there. The Everyone here. The and here we are, getting on top of the cutoff. Kuwagen forcing away a squad, doing some good capping. What I was meaning to talk about is, like, in that engagement here, say if there's, like, a sandbag and there's, like, negative cover on either side of the sandbag, if you're both standing, like, on either side of the sandbag, both on negative cover. It actually counts as a uh, neutral cover, like open ground, rather than negative cover. Just a small fact there. So I think in terms of this engagement, those conscripts, like at one stage you move them kind of out of heavy cover around the corner a little bit, then I think that put them in negative cover. Maybe the Fox Trinities were still counted as in uh, neutral cover. Which is why the Fox Trinities performed so well there. The conscripts did not. But obviously, if you're like in heavy cover and the squad comes up from the rear, you're not in heavy cover or in neutral cover. It's just like a if you're on opposite sides of cover and uh, you're uh, in the close range scenario. Made, but Treads was already in motion and evades that very easily. And with the assistance of this flamethrower getting a lot of territory under his control, to go for like a pretty early medics here. The manpower bleed shouldn't be too steep in a maneuver like this. 
but Macmillan United end up capping on the far flanks both fuels so Dred's a little bit behind in uh, fuel control which could be trouble if Macmillan is going for a Lux that Lux is going to arrive very fast and Dred's T70 in response will arrive slowly And they're having locked into a commander urban defense, doesn't have uh, guards, which could complicate things a little bit further. Oh, this is like a pretty decent map for guards as well, because you can kind of like slam them into these buildings on the far flank. That can really restrict where a light vehicle can punish you. You back that up with an AT gun later on, and you should be uh, pretty all right, especially if you're quite far behind in fuel. But yeah, we'll get to see how these shock troops get on. You see, they're not going to perform too well against the looks, so that's going to be a lot of manpower bleed. A soft retreat here from the conscripts. Now at number 2 you want in close. Oh, with the STGs popping right then as well. Should have got out of there a little bit earlier, but... Not going to cost you too much. Here come the shock troops closing in, but we've got three squads nearby here. Two of them with STGs. Troops close the distance. Throw a grenade onto the other side of the door. And uh, get control of the building. Looking for the wipe here. But, you know, it's a little bit too slow cycling through the building. It's the entry and exit timer there, hurting treads and unable to get the white. Right, double STG folks sitting down here behind the heavy cover, causing some issues. And here comes the looks. Should be very effective against everything treads has down here. He does have access to the uh, M42 light AT gun though, so that's what he might be thinking of. Has managed to put down his tier 2, so this is also an option, but it is going to be the M42. Oh, slightly late retreat again from Treads. Millen should be chasing a little bit there. A little bit earlier with the Fox Street Deers. Might have been able to get the white, but. It's alright. There we go, M42. Didn't quite get a shot on there. Okay, going for AT grenade tech now. So that's going to be the response. The M42, you know, can be a little bit easier to use than this. It's got like a wider arc of fire. Nice cut off there from Treads. One's a moment of opportunity to get down onto that cut off. The enemy is taking what we have secured. And now shock troops. Gonna try close in here. Maybe not ideal to close in down the road, but oh, trust there a grenade, but slightly too late. And McMillan a little bit slow getting this looks going again. Should have sent it towards the south a lot earlier than this. It's just started moving it, you know, when he, as soon as he was engaging down here. The conscripts oorahing in. No, oorahing out. The squad didn't quite get the AT grenade off, but here comes the M42. Got one shot on the looks. Backed it up. McMillan has still had uh, very strong fuel control to this point. Troops does have a decent amount of fuel, but when we've gone for shock troops and the M42 does not have the manpower to try and tick up right now. It's kind of a situation you can box yourself into as Soviets. If you try to go for like an AT gun and a squad of elite infantry, you lay your tick a very long way. But M42 getting in there for a couple hits. Looks going to be out of action for repairs for a decent chunk of time. Does have the minesweeper upgrade though for the faster repair times there. M42 
42 pull him back. Just getting the cap off there. Kubel capping in the middle. Maybe the 42 could find it. Nope. So at this stage, Treads might just be thinking about going for a fast uh, medium tank, honestly. Notice that McMillan has gone for a Rakitin, so that has slowed his momentum somewhat. Expecting to need it to repel a light vehicle, so maybe Treads, I'm not sure if he's seen this yet. But if he does, maybe could exploit that by not going for a light vehicle and getting a fast medium. As long as he thinks his uh, fuel control can hold up. Rank in, looking for the AT grenade, getting very low on that squad. He spent a lot of time on negative cover, could lose it. A little bit of a lucky break there. G34 Ob gets the pin off before they get the cap. But yeah, one of the benefits of Soviets, you know, obviously getting that fast tier 4 out, is that you can get those fast 7 man upgrades going as well. Which can really assist you. And he does have plenty of munitions for those seven man upgrades it's not just like fast ticking to get your medium tank out it's also fast ticking to get your upgrade as well whereas mcmillan if he you know instead of going for the raketon went for maybe a squad of falschen jaeger he could really put the boots to treads right now That has not been the case so far. And it looks like McMillan putting out his next truck. Oh, this could be an interrupt here. We've got a squad of conscripts charging onto the munitions point here. Maybe looking for the flank on that machine gun in the north and find the truck. So McMillan will have to delay his ticking for a little bit here. Be interesting to see where he puts it. It's very common to try put it overlooking this or maybe overlooking this cutoff. That's what will be his option. Let's just find the truck again. <laughs> Shock troops with a predictive grenade, but does not connect. Well, not very well at least. Oh, and he did wire that off, but somehow he's managing to stand right on the edge of the circle and still be in the light cover there. But here comes the looks, and it's going to have something to say about that. We're heading to the south. He's got to be a lot more careful with the Kubel now. Always have to worry about the Ura in with the AT grenade finishing you off. And just as I say that. Slightly bad cool positioning, you know, kind of back to the uh, truck there. And now there's a very high chance of this going down. Treads not chasing actually, okay. It looks to go a T grenade, he should be trying to go for the uh, forward repair. The Stumpai's up there, but it looks like he's backing it away. So yeah, quite a few small mistakes so far with the looks. Just uh, not quite as active as it should be. And that is giving Treads a little bit of breathing room here. And there is going to be indeed a straight tech to tier 4 going for all those upgrades now. On his conscripts. And yeah, just needs a tiny bit more manpower and he's there for the T-34. So McMillan in a bit of trouble. Seems like he forgot to put down his tech truck for quite some time as well while these repairs were going on. And here it goes. And he's holding the line effectively. Attack ground attempts here from treads through the shrubs. But the looks closing in here. And he ends up taking two shots. I thought he was going to try to get the decoy on, honestly. 
Which would have been a bit risky without any supporting infantry nearby, but... I thought that was his plan anyway. Who <laughs> are still ticking though. Softening up these conscripts in the north. In the late game, you don't have to use the Kubel uh, to attack. You use your con or your folk is mainly to do the fighting and then just send the Kubel afterwards to do the capping. So there's a lot of utility in that role. Running so fast. And there we go, another snare onto McMillan's light vehicle. It's just too many. Too many snares. T-34 in production. And McMillan uh, going for a second raquette in here. As well as a squad of Obers. But you can see how late his Obers are coming in. He could have had this tick up uh, a couple minutes ago and that would have really helped him maintain map control the last couple minutes just a little bit of manpower nice work there backpedaling out of the heavy cover ooh let me retreat but he gets out of there very very close call however T-34 heading to the south oh he's got the tiger skin on that it's a rear sight was that a lion skin? I thought I had my alerts muted, but apparently not. Look how bunched that squad is after their sandbag guide. Oh, and they go down because of it. Double Rakitans though, that can be scary for the T-34, it's going to have to be careful with them. Around them. At this stage, Treads probably should be looking to get either another squad of combat engineers if he wants to try save for the KV-2. Or another tank, and it looks like it's going to be another squad of combat engineers. Because there's the option of going for like double T-34s or maybe even a Katusha. Try and deal with the uh, team weapons from McMillan. Chusha a little bit riskier in this exact position because he's only got the 45 melee T gun instead of his Zis, which could leave him vulnerable to a Panzer IV rushing the Katusha. But still would have been viable. T-34 looking for some hits, the squad low, and there he goes, gets on the retreat. And it looks like McMillan just using these as one control group, the double raquettons. Going head hunting rather than trying to uh, spread out and limit the impact of the T-34. Got a grenade. Pretty good dodge. Oh boy, could get the wipe, but conscripts can't stick around. And the looks actually took down two models very quickly, so I always get away. That was a close call for both players, though. So. Here we go once again, going head hunting, looking for the T34. Looks like it's just behind the sight blocker. Rakitin doesn't get a shot in there. This is where using your AT guns together as one group can hurt you if your opponent, you know, switching from side to side. Pushing and pulling them. Don't end up getting any shots in, but of course you have the upside of if the tank runs into them, it's a very high chance it's gonna die. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a big old blob of Soviets coming in. Could be a wipe here. Shock troops go for the predictive grenade rather than just going for the chase down. This squad ends up going down anyway, though. I feel like there was an unnecessary uh, predictive retreat path grenade. 
Almost cost him the white. Still always got a cotton scripts without the upgrade at the moment. And T34 hasn't been up to much for quite some time. Now mobilizing. A bit risky coming in like this though, because you have to expect the Rakitans are going to be nearby and there he spots them. But he clears the arc before they get a shot on in return. That's overall pretty good, and his map control at the moment, Treads, is looking uh, pretty damn strong. This T-34 has afforded him a lot of map control and Macmillan by trying to save for the Tiger has been uh, getting punished the last three or four minutes but once that Tiger hits I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure Treads is going to be feeling the pain and he's not terribly well equipped to deal with the Tiger knows this still 40 fuel away from his KV-2 even once he gets the KV-2 the Tiger backed up by the double Rakitans is still a daunting prospect the SU-85 can be a little bit tricky on this map there are a lot of sight blockers in the middle at least at the moment before they get crushed which can make it lack of turrets and uh, focus sight mode not quite as effective on this map it's a mystery for these sight blockers but maybe the heavy tanks will crush them all and uh, that won't be a factor shortly yeah, it looks like Treads is gonna go for the Zis but I feel like maybe you could just hang on here and go straight for the KV-2, now only 10 fuel away from that and if he goes for the Zis it's going to be like 3 or so minutes worth of manpower away from the KV-2 so I feel like this is a mistake right now the Zis not a horrible one at least the Zis can you know like barrage the double kittens if they get out of position slightly okay T-34 wants to get the kill here on the looks but misses its shots, so it cannot chase. Okay, let's go for some attack round shots, but do not connect. Tiger. Going for the south end strongly. Ready with the Panzer Commander, of course. Kubel, still alive. <laughs> Still harassing, still gaining territory. Good, good work, keeping it alive to the 24th minute or so. Very impressive. But yeah, this is such a long save now for the KV-2. Every bit of manpower bleed for Treads is so punishing. Takes down the Kubel there. Pretty good run. Tiger threatening the T-34, but only gets one shot on him. Yeah, double AT guns there. Scaring it off. Oh, going for attack grounds, is that? How do you, how do you see there? And now T-34 coming in, getting a rear armor shot. Tiger briefly uh, exposing itself here, and the T-34 is going in. Ram here, ram? No ram, oh boy. I've got too close for the ram, but might still get the kill. While the T-34 is out of control, it gets a final shot in, and the Tiger goes down just like that, just slightly exposing his rear armor for that entire engagement, and he drops the Tiger. And that is really good for Treads, because that Tiger, like, it could have been, honestly, another three or four minutes before he got his tank out, just because of the amount of manpower bleed that would have done. Now, uh, now we can actually fight back onto the map pretty effectively. He's got a lot of infantry, two AT guns to help tame the looks. He's in a good spot, even though at the moment he doesn't have that good map control. Still got a pretty uh, good VP lead.
Try to inflict a little bit of extra bleed on these squads as they retreat. But yeah, the tiger actually did crush quite a lot of this shrubbery, so it is a little bit more opened up. Can be very strong. The S-35 in the late game. Oh, conscripts trying to put sandbags down, but they're on negative cover and they're getting ripped into by the Obers. Switching over to the canister rounds with the M42 taking off prioritized vehicles. And there we go, opens up. It's one shot and oh, that was a nasty bundle grenade though. Squad down, they got clumped up on retreat. Kind of like clumped into light cover there and then clumped on retreat. Oh, that was a uh, very painful bundle grenade. Shock troops should be on a 2v1 here, especially with the grenades. Their vet three. Yeah, very easy. Two v one there. Where's that look set? Still, uh, never, no stage ever got the repair pioneers. It's a little bit unusual. Very good, uh, it's quite nice to be able to just back your light vehicle over the repair station and leave your student pioneers on the battlefield. I suppose, you know, you don't really want to get it for your tiger if you can avoid it. And he lost his tiger now, so he needs to start saving for another one. Now that could be a tall task because here comes the KV-2 and this thing is nasty. Very, doesn't have like a super high rate of fire but got very strong AOE on its gun and if you make a lot of use of attack ground especially, it can be very strong, it's kind of like a Brumbia with a turret. Uh, Enemy forces are attempting to capture our territory. Some nice bonuses as well from Peter at sea. Slightly faster projectile than Bombay though. But yeah, like other heavy tanks, it does gain improved range of it too. So when it, when it gets that range bonus, that's when it becomes like super nasty. It always surprises me when I face it. Range bonus. Going in, hoping to get this sneer off. Not quite. Millen hasty on the retreat, and does hit vet five on that now. So that's nice. He's gone for a third raketen here to ta help tame the KV. I feel like two should should be enough. Maybe he's a little bit lighter on infantry now. He's going to have to lean quite heavily on his looks to still assist him. Maybe two coming in, looking for the white. Triple kittens opening up, getting a few good hits and oh wow, even that one's super long range. I don't want a booby trap down here. If you can micro these well, they can be extra nasty if you, when you're standing in them. Because the squad say enters the point. And oftentimes booby traps will go off like then when there are like two models in the area. A little bit of splash, here we go. Yeah, there we go, nice. McMillan knows how to do it. And the entire squad is in the booby trap area. Can do a lot more damage. Maybe should have gone for the chase down look for the white there, but... That's alright. Okay, he didn't get any repairs. The triple kittens, pound him. He's got triple combat engineers, so the repairs should be very, very fast on that. Oh! 
And there we go, that's the Zis Barrage. Chasing away the Rakitans. Melon, uh, two minutes away from his Tiger now in terms of fuel. If he hangs on to this amount of map control, he's got the triple cap running at the moment. So he's quickly leveling the VP score. As for treads, a little bit low on manpower at the moment. He's got plenty of fuel, quite a few options open. Oh, this could be the this this could be the mother load. The Oba running away. Ooh. There's like one model from the Oba lingering in there for a little bit longer. But they do go down and the Obas get the wipe. Yeah, an already low house squad like that. The booby trap, man. So strong. I've seen the highlights video. Oh! Sticks the engine damage stuck around to get rid of the conscript but the double AT guns get in there for the punish not much he could have done there he knew it was coming you know he could have smoked out and so Treats had to rely on attack ground shots but I don't think he had enough time to get the smoke in there realistically Jabra Kittens in a very similar position quite a lot of damage to the KV And uh, yeah, a lot of repairs required or, and reinforcement for treads. So, once again, his map control, despite having a heavy tank on the field, is not that strong. Losing a few of those squads is impacting the amount of capping he can do. Especially when his combat engineers are so busy repairing up the KV all the time. And here is the tiger. And this triple raketon will be tr tricky for treads to deal with. Once again, he may have to think about going for the uh, Kachusha. A lot of damage here onto the tiger. A little bit surprised the tiger. Maybe actually, maybe the upgrade's not complete. Okay, I was gonna say maybe. You Surprised Tiger didn't land a uh, drop in artillery on the AT guns, but upgrade the Panzer Commando hadn't finished quite yet. Shock troops closing in. Grenade in. Long range grenade. One Rakitin gets decrewed there. If he can follow up with the kill on that, that'll be really strong. He's trying to keep his squads in there so they have sight to allow the AT guns to get the job done. No, he's going to go for the Zisbrush to clear that one out first. You're on the south, Overs vs Conscripts for the Overs are very highly vetted and end up taking it. KV2 heading down that way, you're going to look for the wipe. The Overs did retreat reasonably early and if the KV2 comes down this direction he's not going to spot it. Whoa, loses the shock troops going for the recrew there. Oh that was so costly for treads. I would not, I definitely would not have done that. I thought he was just going to kill it. He doesn't really need to take another AT gun. He's already got. Oh boy, that's his own mind getting triggered there. He's not get engine damage. A lot of damage onto the Tiger. And here's the Gachusha now going off for the double Rakittens. Pretty good damage. They dropped the model carrying the gun a lot of damage only two models though but decent start for the Katusha and that's how you want to be using it ideally kind of like feeling out the range with your heavy tank allowing it to open up on your heavy tank then reasonably close range Katushaing them open the wipe I 
Lizards is definitely focusing on the VPs here capping in the center at the moment. Well, looks like there's this pull back for some reinforcements. But luckily the Tiger didn't get too strong of a hit. Into the M42 there, survives, gets away. Oh, concussive grenade should retreat. They're pretty clumped up. The Tiger right there. Oh, that was a big hit. Tiger takes one shot. Who's with the uh, self-healing there? Yeah, for a good chunk of the damage. Looks like some attack grounds there from McMillan. Katusha should just about be ready to fire again. Over to mine there, end up retreating. Looks like Treads is not going to take uh, any chances. No, he is going to bring the KV forwards. He did invest into a Max and try and hold on to the center as well. Want to note. Does this prize to try and clear out the MG? Ooh, good attack round there from the KV. Almost knocks out the machine gun. And Tiger getting zoned out there by double anti tank guns. Millen still hanging on to the VP in the center at the moment for and he's starting to even up the count if you going for a long range attack ground there the the kittens line. fire back and here comes the Katusha but Millen hears it through the fog and starts to retreat early and treats going for like a one into the retreat path I'm not entirely sure Mel oh, is just like really crazy scatter he did this one from base the last one was from closer around here to around here so the scatter really wild on that this barrage oh, dropping the artillery onto the KV forcing it away Patrice does manage to capture the center and dodge the artillery and the Maxim hanging on. However, the Obers did manage to sprint their way to the south. Got a booby trap on the VP there, now capturing the fuel. However, in the north, conscripts capping. The VPs are changing hands. Oh, probably a misclick on the Rakitans there. Probably just A moved them forwards and A moved them a little bit too far forwards. KV came in there, got a big hit, but once again, only one model. Well, it's very close to VET 2 now, that's when it gets the range bonus, and that's when it can become really scary. It's got 50 range. Make uh, dealing with it with the Rakesan quite tricky. Since they don't have much more range than that. If you, you know, attack ground from close to max range, you can basically shoot 55 range with KV-2. A long range scatter shot. And now it's healthy again. Walking Stuka going to be the answer here for McMillan to try and deal with the double anti tank guns. Back the other way, Treads going for an SU 85, and that will cause the Tiger a whole bunch of issues. The trap goes off on the conscripts. And they retreat, and didn't take any model losses though. It's often the MO of the booby trap. Katusha going after the double Rakittens and just to dodge the artillery there from the Panzer Commander and the Katusha missing away the Rakittens a lot of health damage again only one model at least on the Rakittens maybe one from the machine gun as well but five kills now but already V1 just kind of shows how much health damage it's been doing if it's not being reflected in the kills and 
Now putting down a whole bunch of mines as base doorstep to make sure Katusha is a little bit safer. Yes, any base raids. It's taking a while to push back onto the map. And the walking Stuka is out. But yeah, now with the ECU 85, that tiger's gonna have a lot of trouble, especially with most of those sight blockers knocked down. It's gonna be hard for it to hide. Tiger's also Vic 2, he's also got the 50 range. Here we go, S385 Zis combining for some big damage on the Tiger. Lost away for repairs. We've got the Walking Stuka coming in, targeting the Zis. See how Treads dodges this one. Dodging to the south, it looks like. damage onto this. Quite a decent amount of damage onto the S-85 though. There should be quite a lot of experience for the walking stick. Nearly V1 off that one barrage. Next to all that health damage it did to the S-85. So I'm going to sweep it down to do the booby trap this time. Oh but he's leaving slightly too early. Oh and uh KV, taking a lot of Rakitin damage, but here comes the Katusha. Once again, uh, from base, quite a lot of scatter. And I uh, only got two kills because of that. It seems like Treads is having trouble controlling all of his units. And that is leading to some slightly suboptimal Katusha barrages because Katusha is not far enough forwards to get really strong barrages off. It's ready 5 dishing it out, but in comes the artillery. No dodge. No very, very late dodge from the machine gun. Could go down. Very close call. Oh boy. And these Rakettans, they're vetting up. You know, this one's nearly Vet 3. So there's also Vet 2. But, you know, Vet 2, that's when they become really scary with that rate of fire bonus. Can't linger in the arc for very long. And Tread's really struggling for VPs. McMillan with this Ober Squad, you know, with the passive sprint. Just uh, doing a really good job of operating on the flanks and doing a lot of capping exploiting that sprint and the booby traps a good walking stuka dodge again from treads basically exact same barrage from mcmillan like in a straight line back to the base treads dodges it again might have to get a little bit more creative Shoot from the KV there. Hope we'll stick around to complete the capture though. Trid's on the drain. Trid's now down to 119. He's in a little bit of trouble in the VP game after having a close to 250 point lead at one stage, I think it was. Millen has leveled the playing field largely thanks to that Tiger. Treads now with the you know, not much capping infantry either, lost his last squad of conscripts. Decent option for him could be the T-34. Oh, here we go, Katusha time. Just away the support weapons, S-85 could go for the chase down on the Tiger here, it's very low. KV is still reasonably healthy as well, can assist in this push. 
Could even consider going for the uh, truck here. In this moment of weakness for McMillan. McMillan going for a Panther. She just needs to get the job done before that arrives. The 25 coming in at a slightly awkward angle here. Maybe doesn't have sight because of that building. Looks like there's this sitting up for some shots. The 25 not assisting here though. Maybe expecting the Tiger to come down the middle. So it's, maybe, it's not going to be enough damage. Not early enough at least. And here comes the walking Stuka. Treads with the dodge. Dodges up. Almost loses There's this, but not quite. What is it? Fresh squad of shot troops for treads, by the way. KV ends off the troops from the south. Yeah, what I was saying is a T34 can be a decent option, you know, a little bit extra mobility, and once it gets a bit one can do capping for you. Maybe you could go for a walking Stuka raid. But one thing that Treads has been un unable to do much of is get mines down. Despite having three combat engineers, basically all his time has been spent repairing up his KV-2. And this Panther could actually punish that. Looks like he doesn't quite have the pop cap for it though. I think it costs 18. So until he drops a few models from a couple of squads, he won't hit the battlefield. model dropped here. Yep, and there it goes. <laughs> Panther coming in. S35 moving in. Here we go, Tiger Force of... Oh boy! Stumpire is in trouble. But he's trying to avoid getting snared on the KV. Ooh, big shot from the KV. T34 going for the chase down. Needs to change the angle. No, he's backing away with it instead. Panther charging forwards, but the S-35, everything is there. Panther takes a lot of damage. And then uh, gets out of there. It's a lot of repairs required now for McMillan. Maybe this is the moment where Treads can get something done, but he also requires repairs on two of his tanks. T-34 comes down here, hoping to find the Obers, I think, but they've already altered their angle. And here comes the walking Stuka. Wow, really good rockets out of there for Treads. Kind of landed here, here, and here, just like narrowly, narrowly avoiding the M42. It survives. And now we've got Vet 3 on the KV-2. And two hits the Obers. That four one was about low health, and that's what KV2 loves. It's uh, large AoE. Chusha once again forcing away their kittens, but they got a good chunk of damage, and KV2 is going to be out for a pair for quite some time. However, the M42 and the S85 getting some hits on the Tiger that tried to come through the north. Over that drops some artillery on the exit and knocks out the machine gun altogether. Ooh, S35 finds the Tiger, but he gets scared off by the threat of the Faust there. Even though it doesn't result in engine damage, maybe he worried about the Panther. But the Panther's in the south, chasing down the T-34. That pulls back, and is this moving in on that now? It's a rear armor hit on it. Maybe he's also worried about the uh, double raquettes coming in from base to clear out the S35. But I think I probably would have gone for a suicidal charge there with my SU to take out the Tiger. Might have been the mistake though. You know, McMillan has quite a few resources remaining in the bank. Could have got one out once again pretty quickly. Once again, a very safe Katusha from the base. Quite a lot of scatter. <laughs> does that count as friendlies killed? When you kill yourself? It looks like it does. 
Nice grenade. I don't know if I, you know, ever paid close enough attention to whether grenading yourself results in a uh, friend he's killed or not. Oh, very lucky escape there for the shock troops. And he's 25. Getting hit in. And now we see Treads getting a few mines down, which is nice. This time covering the VPs though, but we did see the Panther down here earlier. Could also uh, hit some of these mines. And I'll be mining up like crazy to try and limit that Panther's effectiveness. He's down to 53 though, he's got to be careful about the VP score, and here we go. Smoke from McMillan coming in, AV a little bit low in health, and he's got to follow this up with some walking Stuka, this is a lot to deal with at once for Treads. But he manages to avoid the worst of that walking Stuka, very impressive. Double Rakettons though, all nearly take down the SU, and the Panzer Commander dropped on the fresh Maxim, but there comes a Katusha, and this time the Rakettons are very far forwards, one of them goes down, I think I heard the Panther chase down the T-34 in the south, but then the Tiger goes down to the SU-85. Cool, that was a hectic sequence. Both players losing a lot. Panther did uh, get engine damage, but nothing really healthy enough to follow that up. It looks like the shock troop's going to branch out to the northern VP. Look at the range on that KV. I was nearly going down there. Victory is slipping from our grasp. We have only 50 points remaining. The enemy is encroaching yeah, on our territory. ticking under 50. Mine triggers on the Fox. They're low, but they stick around for the capture. Panther now backing away. He's got his squad of Sturmpires heading to the south now. Patrich, you know, getting the capping going himself. Shouldn't drain any further. And the KV just about up to full. Should be able to dish it out to the Panther. KV2 does do uh, deflection damage, so when it shots, found to penetrate. Still does a percentage of its damage. I can't remember if it's half or a third, but it also does 240 damage per hit. We are losing territory. So it's quite a lot. Oh, there we go. Nice walking Stuka barrage there from Mill and Treats. Didn't move his Katusha after the last barrage, I think. He got the kill. I think he scouted that out maybe actually with the smoke bombs. Either way, nice move. Looking Stuka takes down the Katusha long range. And there we go, fresh Tiger from McMillan. Doesn't have the veterancy. Panther charging in though on the KV. Oh, and it takes a lot of damage. Oh, nearly goes down there even. He's 35 chasing in. Panther should be blitzing away here. Trying to get to safety. Oh, this is so dangerous. Luckily, all the anti tank switches directions though to deal with the Tiger. Doesn't go for the chase down. And boy, that tiger took a beating. Very low in health now. And there's a lot of repairs. And in the meantime, McMillan gonna drain out a lot of VPs. He's seen he's kidding out to the north to do some capping. The shock troops actually retreating upon I think a booby trap it looked like. Got over 64 kills, man. I've been having a good day at the office. Looking Stuka ready to fire again. It's got that VIT 2 cooldown bonus now. Fire of rockets more rapidly. Which I thought is what he's going for there with the uh, smoke slash recon plane. 
Okay, oh, just a whole gang of mines going down for treads. Trying to protect this VP. Trying to get like two sets of mines so that, say, if the Obers come in here, the two miles will drop to this one, two miles to this one. Get the squad wipe. <laughs> I didn't even see that, was there an enemy mine over there? And he ran into it with the combat engineers after finding his own mine and both triggered, almost lost them. That's pretty funny. Serves him right for not having sweepers on that squad though. Heavy machine gun team, prepare for combat. And these TG folks get down here, trigger one mine. Treads is capping in the north though, so I'm gonna drain out. But now McMillan getting low down to 77. This is getting tense. The Panther's full health, the Tiger's full health. And the KV is not full health. It's coming down to the south. Backed up by the double AT guns and the SU-85. The Tiger's in the north. Try to open up the capture on the VPL. That's a lot of damage main gun crit even on the Panther. It has to pull back. Oh, can he stop the coup? Oh, he stalls it. Grenade in. Frangible with the smoke. Tiger clears out the cap in the north. But this is where his stern pies are. No repairs for the panther. Or slow repairs. Did get the repair upgrade, but he hasn't backed close enough to it. So they haven't started repairs on the panther yet. Bundle grenade, but combat engineers staying in there. Stalling the capture. He might lose the squad for the trouble here, though. And now folks coming in from the other angle, threatening the snare, threatening the D-crew on the Maxim. KV missing wildly. Doesn't look like he's been using uh, attack ground in some of these scenarios. Here comes the walking Stuka. Three five is there. So is the Vet three or oh, Vet four Raketen rather. Can the KV clear it out in time? Two eighty five in a bit of trouble. Ooh, that Rakitin so low, but he dropped the artillery. Two eighty five could go down here. Yes. Oh, but he also manages to knock out the Rakitin. That's such a huge loss. Panther now has backed away to the uh, repair station. A few VPs draining off trees down to seventeen, fifteen. Capping on here, he's got the machine gun down here, covering this one. Grenade, oh, nice grenade. Tiger overlooking the VP, opens up, we've got the double AT guns moving in on that now. Concussive grenade. They're battling hard, down to 10. Bounce, I don't think M42 would have got the kill there, even if it had penetrated. Doesn't quite do enough damage, I think. Would have been very close in the KV2. Coming forwards here. Shock troops have arrived. That's the threat. Machine gun repositioning here against the Overs. And finally gets the suppression in. He's got the comm engines with the flamethrower there as well. So Overs. Nope. Here comes the walking Stuka targeting that. Ooh. Kind of like ran back into it. Comm engines stalling the capture. Maxim setting up. But they're in like cover. From engineers going down, they might be able to get the cap off before he gets the pin in here. Because of that light cover, the craters. No! So close to it though. And the VPs are stalled. Treads down to eight. Getting in there for the capture again. Shockies hit the mine. KV getting repaired by one combat engineer. Very, very slow. He's only got one. We lost that uh, flamer just before. And now McMillan going for another tank. Panther coming in, looking for the KV. He's got to find its rear armor here. No squads available for the snare. The T guns rotating pretty well there for treads. But a uh, good evasion from McMillan. And down goes the KV out of control. 
Can we get another out of control miracle? No, the turret is too slow. Speaking of uh, miracles, Panther blitzing away and it uh, looks like it's going to survive. Oh, what's he doing? The spin around. The Panther goes down. Tragedy strikes for McMillan. The pathing no good for him there. This barrage allows the Maxim to survive that Ober with its frontal assault. And Treads hangs on to the VP's 50 remaining. Going for an S-85, I think that's a good choice against the Tiger. Walking Stuka though, a lot of team weapons here in a line. And again, another good dodge. He's going to have to pull back for some uh, healing and reinforcements. Going to lose the M42. And, yep, does. Oh, but the Shockies get the wipe with the grenade. And uh, Treads looking for the trip gap here briefly. Stempire's heading to the north. Here comes the Panzer IV. Zis is still here on two models. We'll go down to a stiff breeze. McMillan going for the Panzer Commander upgrade on that. It's the decoy on the Zis. Shock troop smoking, trying to hide in the smoke. Machine gun goes down on one model. He's all in on the cap here. Grenade, but shock troops don't take any damage. They already retreated a long time ago. Big hit from the Panzer IV there. Smoke wearing off. But here comes the SU-85. Panzer IV could be in trouble. Decent grenade from the shock troops. Oh, SU-85 not on prioritized vehicles. Shoots a shot at the Obers. Oh, actually killed the Ober model there. Could he get the wipe? By coming forwards. S-85, got to be careful he doesn't back himself into a corner. Tiger blitzing. Looking for the SU here. 17 VPs remaining. Oh, but the Panzer IV hits a mine. He's sent to the south to open up the capture. And he loses it to the mine, but the SU-85 is going to go down as well. He's got a squad heading to the north, though. Desperation caps. Sternpios open up the middle. S-85 goes down. Yeah, and this is going to be a uh, tense capping war. Eight versus eleven. Dimpies get the neutralize. Chockey's in the north, so a little bit of drain here on McMillan. Ten remaining. And I think Treads could have avoided a lot of this if he just retreated these two team weapons. Reinforced them. I think he had enough breathing room to do that. Especially the Zis. Maybe you could have left Maxim there. Shock troops. Can they get the cap off? Oh, the Obers stop for a split second. And they do get the cap off. Now smoking. Stalling for as long as humanly possible. Tiger misses attack round. Can't get the cap in there. He's sending out a Kubel to do the cap in the south. Shock troops do go down. Two VPs remaining. And that's going to be it. Trez is going to take it. Oof. Well, oof. what a nail biter at the finish there. Extremely close. I feel like Trez had a decent lead throughout this, but he just had a lot of trouble controlling all his units. Though he did a good job every time dodging the walking Stuka. That was very impressive. Just seemed like uh, some of his movements not quite optimal in conjunction with uh, repairing up his KV-2. But yeah, really good dodging of the walking Stuka throughout the entire match. I was very impressed with that. As for McMillan, I think his main issue here was not enough damage with the looks. He just uh, got it snared too much, a little bit too clumsy with its control. A little bit too much downtime on it, not sending it constantly from target to target. Allowed treads to get towards that medium tank earlier than he should have. Well, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.